Today I want to take you on a little tour of this fantastic flower bed, as my Christine just called it, the hydrangea sandwich. Come on. friends, welcome to Gardening with Creekside. I am Jenny and today I'm going to take you on a little bit of a garden tour of this fantastic beautiful space. Again, we have been here before, you know this area well, but everything is in full bloom and I wanted to walk you through it and give you a little bit more in depth about these two different hydrangeas that I am very happy about being sandwiched between. So this is the steep bank that we have. We've been here before with the silverberries. They are still loving life. In fact, we actually have some um, touchage right now. They are touching each other and just growing wonderfully. We finally got some rain last night, so everybody is very happy. But in this bed, we're on the bank. I have little lime hydrangea from Proven Winners, and then I have the firelight hydrangea from Proven Winners. Both of these are panicle hydrangeas, and you know how much I love panicles because they are one of the easiest hydrangeas to grow. So if you've struggled with hydrangeas before, then you might want to consider a panicle hydrangea. A panicle always has these cone-shaped flowers. They always bloom on new growth. That means that come late winter, very early spring, I can come out here and trim them, shape them up, and I am still guaranteed blooms every single year. Now, let's talk about little lime. Little lime is the petite dwarf version of the limelight hydrangea. Again, we've talked about this many times before, but whereas limelight can get six to eight feet tall, little lime will only get to be about three to five feet tall. So she's much more manageable um, for people in tighter spaces. She is going to be hardy in zones three through eight. So again, very, very versatile. Again, we're in North Carolina, zone 7B. So I am right on the borderline with her, but she has proven to do really well here. They do get a little bit of some afternoon shade because we've got some tall oak trees here and then the way that the sun sets, they'll get a break. I love little limes because they come out um, in this classic creamy white bloom. And then as the summer progresses, they will turn um, both a little bit more of a lime green and they can even pick up some pink blush in the late summer, early fall. I just love this plant. It is so easy and so versatile. Now, this plant is here. This is gonna be its, I believe it's third year in this bed. Last year, we did not do a hard prune on it. We really just kind of snipped the ends. Um, and they're getting really tall, like you can see this one behind me. This is this whole section right here is new growth from this year. So come this winter, I will probably take them down pretty far because I want them to stay more compact and not get too leggy. Little limes, all panicle hydrangeas make beautiful cut flowers. You can make bouquets out of them. They dry fantastic. So if you want to dry them and have like dried arrangements in your house for the winter, there you go. So with the little limes, again, they need the sun to a little bit of shade, um, especially if you can give them a break in the hot afternoon, that would be fantastic. So we have little lime. Next, we have fire lights. Fire lights are going to be similar to the little limes because they are those panicles, um, but they're going to be bigger. So they're going to be the six to eight feet tall. They are hardy in zones three through eight. Um, they start out and you can see on the plants, we've got some new blooms, which are that creamy, creamy white. Then as the summer progresses, they turn a beautiful blush pink, which is kind of where they are right now. And then in late summer, they turn fire red, hence the name firelight. We planted these just this spring, so they had not even gone through one year's growth cycle. We did plant them as seven gallons, so they are, um, they were quite large when we planted them. Um, 
which I'm really, really happy about. So once they, as the years go on, they're gonna develop and it's gonna be a solid hedge between them. There's not gonna be a whole lot of room or spacing between them which I think is just going to be absolutely gorgeous because if you remember with this bed, it's right beside our driveway, it's right outside of our kitchen. So every time I'm standing there doing dishes or working in the kitchen, I see them and they are gorgeous. So between the fire lights with their pink hues picking up, the silver berries and the little limes, it just makes for a magnificent show that really is very low maintenance. Irrigation, water. This, when we first planted the little limes they were on a drip irrigation this spring when we redid this area and put the fire lights in we took the irrigation off of here and put them up on the fire lights so for this summer both the silver berries and the little limes do not have irrigation they do get any kind of residual water that comes down the bank but they are no longer on irrigation fertilizing a lot of people ask me about how do you fertilize your hydrangeas I only fertilize them in the spring and then if I can remember I will fertilize them again in the fall with a slow release fertilizer. Espoma makes some great fertilizers that we really love. Um, in the spring they got plant tone. Rose tone believe it or not is a great slow release fertilizer for hydrangeas. So you just take it, it's a granular, you sprinkle it around the base of the plant and that's it. Hydrangeas do not like to have that weekly water soluble fertilizer regimen. Silverberries and, and your annuals, absolutely. They love it, it's fantastic. Hydrangeas, no. So that's a great thing. They're a little bit more low maintenance. Now, one more addition to this bed that kind of blends in for right now because they are not very big is behind the fire lights, I have three Nellie Stevens hollies. Nellie Stevens hollies are just a wonderful tree, holly tree, for us here in the south. They are hardy in zones, I wanna say six to nine. If we're wrong, we'll pop it up on the screen. Um, here in the south though, I think they've gotten kind of a bad rap because a lot of people, landscapers, home builders, when they build their house, it's just really easy to plop a Nellie Stevens on the corner of a house and walk away. The problem with that is that Nellie Stevens can get 30 feet tall and 15 feet wide at the base. I personally think they are a gorgeous tree. Again, this is an example of those landscapers or those home builders. You take a great plant, but you put it in the wrong location. So from this big span that we have, I only have three and they're about 20 feet apart from each other. It is my plan never to prune these Nellie Stevens because they will naturally grow in a conical pyramid Christmas tree shape. I'm not gonna ever have to prune them. They are happy, they are evergreen. They will give me a screen. This is still our property, but those trees back there are, they're young, they're kind of spindly, they're not very attractive. I want something really pretty back there that when they're big, that these fire lights just pop off of. Another great thing about the Nellie Stevens is, is that they do produce beautiful red berries. My birds love those red berries. Um, and then in the springtime, before they actually set those berries, they're covered in little tiny white blooms. The pollinators go crazy over them. The honeybees, the bumblebees absolutely cover those trees because of those little white blooms. So it's really good for my garden with my pollinators and then in the winter fall with my birds, it gives them a food source. So if you think holly, don't cringe and freak out. Um, again, in the right location, all plants have their place. And I am so excited about these Nellie Stevens to be back here and to grow and develop and just give me a beautiful hedge with year round interest that these hydrangeas can pop off of. I hope you have found this informative. I hope I have given you a little bit of information about the little limes and the fire lights and Nellie Stevens that maybe you didn't know. Be on the lookout at your local nursery for these guys. They are just fantastic, low maintenance, high performing plants that you will be blessed to have in your garden. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to Gardening with Creekside, and we will see y'all next time, friends. Have a great day. Bye.